We're here talking about industrial co-pilot. Now, long-term viewers of Manufacturing Hub will have seen us talk about Somatic Chatbot, all the way dating back about a year from last Hanover and last Automate. We talked about industrial co-pilot at its official launch on the engineering side at SPS Nuremberg. We've got Kristen back on, and we're talking about the industrial co-pilot, but on the operation side, is that correct? Yes, correct. So. That's what we're showing here exactly, industrial co-pilot for operations. If I can follow up on that, what is the difference having been on both engineering and operations side, maybe what kind of features or what kind of utilities can we see on the operations side when it comes to co-pilot? Yeah, so for the operations version of co-pilot, what we're showing today and what you might have seen at Hanover yeah. or SPS, um, you can actually connect it to a actual machine itself. Yeah. So here we just have a simulated version, but you can actually talk to the machine like you're talking to a real person. Yeah. So you can ask questions like what was the cycle time today or how many parts were produced or you could even ask questions like oh I see there's an error on the machine I'm not sure what that error is what is it and how yep. can you help me so it's really great for those people on the production line it's two in the morning the robot breaks down what do we do yeah. uh, this at least gives them a start to figure out what the problem is and some resolutions to it I have some ideas, I guess, of how you would tie into the machine, but for those who might not be familiar with the different offerings, is that industrial edge, can you pull from an existing database, can you connect over UA, Ethernet IP? What does that look like when you say we can connect to the machine, pull the data, and maybe get some of these insights? Yeah, so currently with this demo simulation model, we're using OPC UA mm -hmm. to connect, but overall, pulling from the Microsoft Azure Cloud data. So you might have heard of Microsoft having actual just Copilot itself, yes. generative AI tool, where this is the industrial version, where we ended up collaborate, collaborating with Microsoft uh, to make an industrial version of what they're already doing. Using their cloud, cloud platform, but also connecting through OPC UA. And I guess another follow-up, who would be the ideal customers? Like, right, yeah. I think the, the operator would have maybe a different set of queries that they could run against the machine versus let's say a manager would want to know maybe like on a more longer term what a, that looks like. Maybe what are some of the users that you would see for Copilot today? Yeah, definitely somebody who's new to operating a machine yeah. first is a great person to have use Copilot because yeah. it's an easy way to get familiar with a machine of what is happening on it, just basic information on it that maybe would take a while to read through a manual to actually understand. So that's somebody, like you said, maybe a manager who wants to have actual data on yeah. what's going on, how can we make improvements, how can we optimize what's actually happening on the machine. But that's also a great person. Field service workers, like I said, somebody who's, it's two in the morning, we need to figure out how do we resolve the problem that's happening on the machine. So quite a few different people that this is targeted yeah. towards. Absolutely, and if I can add to that, I saw some examples in which it was, hey, I'm a new maintenance person, what are the things that I need to do this morning? And so it gives us a list of the five things or the 10 things that you need to check, and you can go in and say, hey, I don't know where this oil reservoir is, and it will go showcase where that is, either in the manual or if you've uploaded uh, Digital Twins, other visualizations to it, it'll go be able to drive people directly towards that. And I know for me, on the operations side, working with those people, I see it as the opportunity to go very quickly on board folks. Yep. And so instead of having to go and spend weeks walking through everything every day, I know Vlad has worked with a bunch of large organizations that have really good documentation. I feel like my life is I work with a bunch of small and medium organizations that have bad documentation if we have any documentation at all. Yep. And being able to go upload just entire manuals to the large language model and be able to go ask those questions and query it in natural language, that there is a huge benefit and I see the opportunity to go onboard people and to go onboard people more quickly. Yep, absolutely. If I can follow up, what are some of the current challenges of getting that information, right? Whether there is like poor documentation on the like machinery side that they need to work through, or maybe the data needs to be like extracted and connected in a certain way. What are some of the maybe challenges, but also opportunities when it comes to building really accurate models and answers for these people? Yeah, from my understanding, what we have here is a full like open AI mm -hmm. system using their system, but then we can refine what the algorithm is able to output by ref yeah refining the algorithm with information of people's actual machines and using operating instructions, different manuals that they have. Of course, maybe that could be a challenge of 
if people don't have good operating instructions mm -hmm. of their own machine, things of that sort, I'm sure could be quite a struggle. Yeah, and I would say to, to that point, I feel like as much as we'd like artificial intelligence to generate us the information that we need, and we see some of that on documentation, like the industrial co-pilot engineering, it's a computer and the computer isn't making something out of nothing, right? If we don't have documentation, if the, the list of things we need to don't exist, it's gonna be somewhere between very hard and impossible in order to go ahead and create that something out of nothing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think what I'm thinking is it becomes really interesting because from the code on the PLC side, you could almost generate some sort of documentation and then you could yeah. use that yeah. to create a, a more refined manual for the users versus, let's say, engineers who understand code. And I think the level of documentation could be made different and then you could obviously yeah. query the co-pilot. And I think it becomes really interesting. I guess yeah, that's my... Does. If you ask or asking good questions with specifics and details, then you're going to get specific and detailed answers out of it too. Mm -hmm. Using any sort of generative AI, the answers are only as good as the questions, of course. Absolutely. Let me ask one last one last question, Kristen. What has the response been to Industrial Copilot and especially the Industrial Copilot operations here at Automate this year? Yeah, it's been great so far. A lot of excitement. Del Costi talked about it in his keynote today, so that was really exciting to see. But yeah, very positive responses. I've been seeing a lot of, I want to say, relieved faces yeah. from people when they realize, oh, here's a way I can find answers to my problems quickly instead of sitting on the shop floor for hours trying yeah. to figure something out. So it gives them a place to start and a little bit of weight off their shoulders, 